so when you find a SI joint that's positive with all your other testing, uh, one thing that Cliff has shown me to figure out whether or not the helium is actually rotated anterior or posterior to some induction test. So initially, you can test her straighten her leg out to get a baseline of how strong she is in hip abduction. You put her in neutral, test her strength, and then you got an idea of what her hip strength should be. If you take her into extension, it's a relative anterior rotation of the helium. Hold okay. it. And she should be the same amount of strength as she is in neutral. And the same with, if you bring her into flexion, it's a relative posterior rotation of the hip in here. When you press, if you find a weakness where she just gives, she's holding on uh, with everything she's got, that means that there's a dysfunction in the SI joint in that position. So if she's in flexion, it's posteriorly rotated, you need to answer the rotator of the pelvic or the helium on the same right. So, so what we looked at was uh, discovered through stone is when we want to differentiate what's the, the hip versus the lumbar spine versus the SI for, for selective repetition tension testing. One of the things that we looked at was fixing the sacrum and, and testing the hip. In our baseline, we found it was 10 degrees of hip extension. She was restricted right here. And so we did a, a pre-test and a post-test pre after treating the, the SI joint for posterior rotation on the left side and the anterior rotation on the right side, which matched Rajesh's assessment. So when we fix the sacrum, we're limiting movement of the hip into the lumbar spine. So we're able to fix the sacrum and assess that's her range of motion. We assess the abduction, which she has more abduction. And then we can look, check the internal rotation at the hip to see if there's any involvement uh, the tissues that are at different angles of attaching on the wall. So the second part is let's uh, drop your leg off the side. So the technique that we selected was an anterior manipulation for the SI joint. So we're going to place our hands palpating the numb and we're going to position our feet so we can find the right angle based on her, her anatomy of the pelvis. The female pelvis has different angulation of the bony structure versus the male pelvis. And so as it's flatter and has an angled surface of the joint, we're going to set the technique up and rotate our feet and find the pressure to where those glide and there's a free range. We're going to assess it with a pre manipulative hold. And then we're going to do a quick thrust and all that. We're going to definitely, since she had no sensitivity in the lumbar spine, we don't, we don't have to position her in a position of flexion to bias any sort of uh, the tissues in the lower back. So if she has no sensitivity, the scan's been cleared on the side. So if we want to add more rotation, since we're in an abductive position, we can put her in a bit more extension and a bit more internal rotation so we can work on tightening the tissues up in the front of the hip. Second. Now we'll start with manipulation. And she will glide. Why a little interfere, Amy? So there's no need to be an audible. And what we will do is just bring the leg back up. We will do a test retest on the range. See if we made any changes on the extension. And we get a bit more hip extension on the side. We look at also, did it make any changes on the opposite side? In just mobility testing. So, this next step we're going to do is retest the strength to see if we remove the inhibition from the, from the restriction at the separate leg. So, she's going to straighten the leg out, raise it up, hold. Good. Good. And bring it back. And two things. You should feel a definite change in her strength, and the patient should actually feel that change. So it's not where you say, oh, this feels better. The patient really can tell 
they can actually hold the leg up and they don't feel like they're going to fall. 